Now on 12 News, tomorrow's emergency hearing before the Waukesha Parade trial. The county's district attorney won't oppose the suspect representing himself on one condition. New video just into the newsroom. Inside a Water Street apartment hit by stray bullets. Does it scare you at all? Yeah, yeah it does, but I don't know, you can't dwell on that. Why some residents are now calling for increased security. Hurricane Ian gaining strength heading towards Florida, the worst case scenario that could bring huge flooding. The evacuations underway tonight and the preps at one Florida trauma center with patients who cannot leave. And message in a bottle, a new friendship formed on both sides of Lake Michigan. Leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 10. Off the top tonight, the emergency hearing happening tomorrow afternoon for the Waukesha Parade suspect. Daryl Brooks wants to represent himself in the trial that's just one week away. Waukesha County's district attorney says she is not opposed under one condition. Investigative reporter Derek Rose is on this tonight. And Derek, you have a letter to the court just filed today. Yeah, Patrick, Sue Opper's letter, one of several last minute documents filed today ahead of an 11th hour hearing tomorrow. The biggest issue, whether allowing Daryl Brooks to represent himself, could delay Monday's scheduled start. In a sudden move last week, parade suspect Daryl Brooks signaled he wants to represent himself in the trial where he's accused of killing six people. Tonight, the Waukesha County DA not opposed as long as there's no additional delay. Sue Opper writing, any request to adjourn the trial at this late date is untimely, adding the trial date was set March 11th, more than six months ago. Opper also questioned the timing of Brooks' request, referencing two recent well. hearings, September 9th when Brooks refused to come to court and when he eventually did complained of a toothache and the judge delayed the hearing. There was also this outburst one month ago. I don't care about no live stream, just like y'all don't care, all this political. Deputies had to remove Brooks from this hearing. This record establishes any request to adjourn at this time would be a tactic by the defendant to attempt to manipulate the court and avoid trial. Opper continued in the filing ahead of Tuesday's emergency hearing on Brooks' request. Politics also an issue. Brooks' public defenders, while still part of the defense team as of Monday, want an additional question for potential jurors. Have you seen any recent political ads featuring scenes from the parade? If yes, determine what they've seen, how it affects them, and whether they can ignore the ads and judge the evidence without bias. Derek, when the trial does start, what are you learning tonight about who will testify? Well, despite the volume of charges, more than 80, Sue Opper only expects to call 12 to 15 victims to the stand. The revelation came over the issue of whether witnesses will have to wait until after they testify to be able to attend the trial. It's not unusual to prevent witnesses from having their testimony influenced by other witnesses. Opper says that should not be an issue here because she says only one victim, a single person, she says, can identify Daryl Brooks. And again, that emergency hearing is happening tomorrow, Derek. Thank you. And we will stream tomorrow afternoon's hearing on the 12 News app. Once Brooks' trial begins, you'll be able to watch it live on on the 12 News Facebook page. Stray bullets hit a Water Street apartment building Saturday night in Milwaukee. New video just into the newsroom shows a hole in an apartment ceiling and a shattered sliding glass door. It happened at the Chroma Apartments near Water and Milwaukee Streets and 12 News Caroline Reinwald is there live tonight. Caroline. That's right, Joyce, and we just obtained that new video from two roommates living inside one of those fifth level apartments shot this weekend. They tell me they went to bed not too long before those bullets hit their home. From the ground, our 12 News camera angle shows a boarded up balcony door and a window nearby with a taped up bullet hole. The photos from inside, though, a little more unnerving for these roommates who were sleeping at the time inside the Chroma building near the corner of Water and Milwaukee streets. I'm kind of used to the loud sounds of the streets. We have noise machines in our rooms, so we didn't wake up at the time. But obviously in the morning, we saw the damage when we came out. Never would have thought it would happen in a you know, pretty nice apartment complex like this in Milwaukee. Video from inside their apartment shows the damage from just before 2 a.m. Saturday morning. Bullets smashing their sliding glass door and piercing their ceiling. Milwaukee police say no one was hurt, but they're looking for the person or people who fired off multiple rounds. Does it scare you at all? Yeah, yeah, it does, but I don't know. You can't dwell on that of, oh, maybe I was making a pot of mac and cheese 15 minutes earlier or something like that. Chroma, owned by Mandel Group, is one of six buildings in what the company calls the North End Apartment Community. This weekend is at least the second time one of the North End Apartments has been hit with gunfire. 
Last summer, a stray bullet hit a six-floor apartment in the Vignette building across the street from Chroma. No injuries reported then either. I'm in a group message. A lot of people are worried. They're, they're, they're going up to the office. They're asking them what are they doing to increase safety here. Very surprised and obviously makes you rethink about living downtown here. Well, again, no one hurt, but Caroline, police tell us they don't know who fired the shots as well. I know you reached out to the Mandel Group, the apartment owner. That's right, and they tell me they are cooperating with Milwaukee police in its investigation, and they tell 12 News it's their understanding that none of their residents were connected to this incident, Joyce. Caroline Reinwald reporting from Water Street this evening. Police still do not know why a group of people unleashed a hail of gunfire early Wednesday. Surveillance video shows the two cars speed off down an alley near 28th and Congress. Police hope someone recognizes the vehicles or the people who open fire. Daylight shows bullet holes dotting a house and a parked car. At least 40 bullets hit the house. Somehow, no one was hurt. If you know anything about this investigation, call Milwaukee Police. Weather Watch 12 now, and there's a true feeling of fall in the air tonight. And Mark, the wind makes it feel even colder. Yeah, kind of a chilly night out there tonight, and that's kind of a sign of things to come here over the next couple of days. A difference depending on where you're at. If you're inland, 50 degrees, 56 degrees right now in Milwaukee, so there is a substantial difference. How about the Dells? Down to 40 degrees. Some spots may get the 30s. And we're certainly going to see that in our forecast eventually, the possibility of some frost. More on that coming up, but I want to talk about Ian continues to rapidly now strengthen, and this is going to become a, a very powerful hurricane as it makes its way toward Florida already, seeing some of the rain making its way into southern Florida. Watch what happens. This moves over Cuba as we head throughout the night, and then through the day tomorrow gets a little bit closer, becomes a very powerful 130, 140 mile per hour sustained winds. Here's 7 o'clock in the morning gets very close to the western coast of Florida. Now, there's still a lot of uncertainty on exactly how this is going to play out. But if this scenario plays out, this would move just to the west of Tampa Bay, and that could equal some very serious flooding there. So hopefully that won't be the case. Regardless, there's going to be a lot of problems, and we'll keep you up to date over the next couple of days. And Mark, tonight there is a state of emergency in Florida as people prepare for potential flooding and power outages. The National Hurricane Center's director says it could be a, quote, near worst case scenario for Tampa. ABC's Morgan Norwood is in Florida where people are evacuating right now. Hurricane Ian charging toward Florida, bringing the potential for catastrophic damage. <laughs> Businesses boarding up and families fueling up as the state scrambles to prepare. We don't know, so we're just going to trust God and do what we need to do. Tampa could see a dangerous storm surge up to 10 feet, and it's why officials are pleading with residents along the Florida coast to get out now while they can. Officials in Pinellas County and Tampa's Hillsborough County announcing mandatory evacuations for some areas. We expect to have to evacuate over 300,000 people, and it will take some time which is why we are starting today. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declaring a state of emergency, activating the National Guard. At the federal level, President Joe Biden declaring an emergency, directing FEMA to provide assistance. And the Health and Human Services Secretary also declaring a public health emergency in the state, calling in more than a dozen medical teams. It comes as a level one trauma facility in the evacuation zone scrambles to prepare. ABC's Rob Marciano shows us. They're putting up their flood protection all around Tampa General. This is their aqua fence. It only comes out during a hurricane. It's mobile, it's modular, and it's necessary. This trauma center sits in the evacuation zone. It will likely flood, and this wall is designed to keep the water out so they can keep the patients in. The storm also slamming the Cayman Islands. Its sights now set on Cuba before moving toward Florida. NASA now planning to roll back its billion dollar moon rocket from the launch pad. Liftoff delayed until the end of October, at least. And in addition to that dangerous storm surge, there's concern about just how long Florida could be dealing with Hurricane Ian. The system could stall over the coast of Tampa for nearly 48 hours. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Tampa, Florida. Stay with 12 News this week as Hurricane Ian moves closer to Florida. We'll bring you updates as they come in from our two sister stations, one in Orlando, another in West Palm Beach.
A Milwaukee man is accused of sexually assaulting several children, all under the age of 13. A criminal complaint says 57-year-old Manuel Perez Avila and his wife ran an alterations business out of their home. It says children would spend time at that home business and played video games there, often with the defendant, and the computer was kept in a small bedroom. In one case, the complaint says, quote, he stated he has a touching problem. Perez Avila is currently in custody. A doctor's report on his competency is due next week. Just in tonight from Madison, a body found last Tuesday in Lake Monona is that of a Milwaukee man. The medical examiner identifies him as 49-year-old Brian Knoll. His death remains under investigation. Tonight, political fallout after a swastika is seen at the West Bend Farmers Market. It was on this sign at the market's GOP booth Saturday. Now, we've blurred out the swastika, but it was right above the donkey, a symbol long associated with the Democratic Party. And in the lower right corner, you see the Chinese flag. A whole lot of community members were hurt, fearful, angry about seeing that image in our uh, farmers market. Robert said once word and pictures of the sign spread, the GOP booth took it down. Now, while he wouldn't speak to us today, the GOP chair released a statement that said in part, it was an ill-conceived attempt to associate the Democrat Party with extremism and totalitarian regimes. It was done without approval of myself or our executive board. The Downtown Association will hold an emergency meeting Wednesday to consider changes regarding political parties or signage guidelines for future markets. The House committee investigating the January 6th Capitol riot subpoenaed Wisconsin Assembly Speaker Robin Voss. The subpoena follows a 12 News exclusive interview where Voss spoke about a call he had with former President Donald Trump. Voss said the former president called him in another attempt to convince Wisconsin Republicans to decertify the state's 2020 presidential election results. And what was that conversation like? Uh, it's, you know, it's one of those that, that it's very consistent. He makes his case, which I respect. Um, he would like us to do something different in Wisconsin. I explained that it's not allowed under the Constitution. That's what Speaker Voss told 12 News Matt Smith in July. Speaker Voss was supposed to testify in front of the House committee today, but his attorneys filed a lawsuit questioning a two-day notice and claiming the subpoena goes beyond the scope of the investigation. Today's deposition was later canceled, but the subpoena still stands. Another House committee hearing is set to be televised Wednesday. Galactic impact next to 10 why NASA slammed a spacecraft into an asteroid just hours ago. Off the tracks in Colorado, the investigation into this train derailment that went right into traffic. Just announced another Amazon Prime shopping event this year when the company promises deep discounts this time and what Walmart and Target are doing to compete. Then message in a bottle from Racine to Michigan, the note that made a 100 mile trip across the lake.
awaiting visual confirmation. As we come back tonight, NASA says its test spacecraft successfully rammed into an asteroid 7 million miles from Earth. The DART spacecraft hit the small space rock at about 14,000 miles per hour. Scientists hope the impact nudged the asteroid's orbit in an experiment that could one day divert a killer asteroid if one were to ever head for Earth. NASA says it'll take a few months to know if tonight's test worked and got the asteroid off track. Newly released video from Colorado shows a train go off the tracks and into traffic. It happened last week in Aurora, just outside of Denver. The incident hurt at least three train passengers. Investigators think the train was over the speed limit when it derailed. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office is out with a price tag tonight on President Joe Biden's student loan debt cancellation plan. Experts estimate it'll cost $400 billion over the next 30 years. The White House says the cost will be offset by other measures to reduce the federal deficit, including the Inflation Reduction Act. But a top Republican on the House Education Committee says the president's plan will, quote, bury the American people under our unsustainable debt. New tonight, two strangers on both sides of Lake Michigan connected through a message in a bottle. That bottle traveled from Racine to North Muskegon, Michigan, about 100 miles in three months. Joni Justo wrote the message that read, quote, always remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved more than you know. I just hope that the person that found it would need those inspirational words and appreciate them. Justo learned her message had been found through a Facebook post. She plans to meet up with that person next summer. What a connection I and what a journey for that bottle. I can't get that sting song out. That's right. what I was going to say. It immediately bottle, right? goes in your head. <laughs> it does, it does. Uh, pretty chilly for September out there. Yeah, Mark, some places have to deal with frost this week. It's going to happen as we head into Wednesday night. It's going to be areas that are away from Lake Michigan and we'll talk more about that coming up. It's kind of tough to take because it's been a pretty warm September so far. Certainly feeling like fall out there. It was breezy, didn't help anything today. We're going to have that again for tomorrow. It's Wednesday morning, the best chance of frost, sunshine all week. This is a super quiet forecast again, though. It just feels a little chilly. Look at all these 80s that we had, 13 of them this month. That's way above average for September. And then we've hit a streak now of five days in a row in the 60s. And the next couple of days, I don't think we get out of the 50s for our high temperatures. And it's been a while since that's happened around here. We're 56 right now. Take you down to Deer District. Very quiet. Winds calm down. We still have these darn clouds have been very stubborn. These will continue to break up though. 53 degrees right now in Brookfield as the sky is clear. Temperatures will drop. These are the lows tonight. Some of you down in the 30s. I think we'll avoid the frost though because we've got that breeze that will continue. That'll mix the air highs tomorrow only in the 50s. And again, that's the first time that's happened in a long time since May the 27th. So we'll go 122 days in a row of high 60 degrees or warmer. The record 147 days in a row was in 2016, 2021. Uh, last year we had 146 days in a row, so it's been a pretty good stretch. Frost possible, and this is inland. When we say inland, let's say Waukesha westward. Low-lying areas uh, have the best threat, the biggest threat of seeing some frost. Temperatures down to the 30s. Even mid 30s, you can still get frost because we take the temperatures up here down near the surface. It can get colder even with the chillier temperatures. It's still a really nice forecast every day. You should get outside chilly, windy for tomorrow, but lots of sun frosty inland on Wednesday. I say that for tomorrow, more clouds in the afternoon, Thursday, Friday, lots of sunshine weekend looking good and temperatures gradually will start warming up again. Temperature outlook. Speaking of warming up, this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. This takes us all the way into October 4th through the 10th. Are we done with warm air? No. To be considered warm now, you just have to get to 70. Tomorrow, the average high is down to 69, so 70 would be above average. There's the cloud cover tomorrow afternoon. A very similar day tomorrow, what we had for today. Then high pressure moves in, sticks with us throughout the day on Wednesday, Thursday. Actually, it's going to be many days in a row. It is a very quiet seven day. 57, 56, lows to 43 on Wednesday morning. 
Again, that's in Milwaukee. Inland temperatures will be colder than that. We do start to warm things up as we head into Thursday. High of 61, still below average, and then getting a little bit warmer over the next couple of days as we work our way into the weekend. Again, lots of sunshine in this forecast, getting to 70 on Sunday, 70 on Monday. So if you're still hoping for warm air, I think 70 this time of year is fairly warm. If you're hoping for 80, that's not looking likely. And thanks for the heads up to uh, cover up the tomatoes. Sent the message home, taken care of. We'll see if they survive. Probably the best idea. <laughs> Thank we you, hope. Mark. Mm -hmm. Well, next at 10, another Amazon Prime Day sale just announced when you can shop the big discounts. After he passed away, that impacted me very deeply, so I started to dig in what's memory, what's time. Richie Morales lost his grandfather to Alzheimer's disease, but the Guatemalan American turned his grief into art. It's on display now at the United Community Center in Milwaukee, a place with the only Spanish-speaking memory clinic in Wisconsin. Online right now, the center's mission and focus. It's part of our Hispanic Heritage Month coverage on the 12 News app. Amazon is hosting its Prime Day sale again. Well, the online retailer usually has the big deals in July, but today Amazon announced it will hold another big sale October 11th through the 12th. You have to be an Amazon Prime member to take part. The company says members can expect deep discounts on top brands ahead of the holidays. Walmart announced its holiday sales will start next month, and Target is planning its own deal days October 6th through the 8th. Well, Stephanie is here now with sports. And Steph, the Bucks opened training camp today. They did earlier today. They also officially signed Jordan Wara. We'll hear from him next. Plus, the praise Matt LaFleur had today for one of his rookie receivers after the win over Tampa. Big Trust Sports is next. 
finding new ways to save you money. Catch up on Rossin Reports anytime on the very local app, free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Big 12 Sports, presented by Menards. The Brewers need some help and play their best baseball the next week and a half if they want to make the postseason. The good news, their final nine games are at home starting tomorrow night against the first place Cardinals. Meanwhile, it's a three-team race for the final two playoff spots in the National League between the Padres, Phillies, and Brew Crew. Milwaukee is currently one and a half games back. On to the NBA, Giannis and the Bucks officially tipped off training camp today and held their first practice of the season at their training facility in downtown Milwaukee. Among the 20 players on this year's roster is Jordan Wara, who re-signed with the Bucks with a two-year deal. The six-foot-eight forward and former second-round draft pick made 15 starts and played 92 games in his first two seasons in Milwaukee. The signing was made official today. Yeah, I was getting a lot of stuff from guys in the locker room, just like when you're going to sign, like, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, once I signed, made it official, you know, everybody's texting me, uh, telling me congratulations. Uh, you know, guys are happy, happy I'm back. So some other people were interested. Obviously, for me, I want to be back here playing with these guys, uh, winning games. While the Packers' defense deserves a lot of credit for the 14-12 victory over Tampa, a few players on offense also stepped up, including fourth-round draft pick Romeo Dobbs. With no Sammy Watkins or Christian Watson, the door was wide open for Dobbs, and he took full advantage of his first NFL start, playing 55 snaps. Dobbs caught all eight balls that came his way for 73 yards, including his first pro touchdown.
I thought he, he made the most of them yesterday. I thought he did an outstanding job. He, he was um, a guy that showed up consistently being able to separate versus the man coverage. The game is certainly not too big for him, showing more, more and more confidence. And I think that's a big part of being able to play to your potential. And this is a kid that's got a ton of potential. It was a long, long plane ride back from Columbus, Ohio, Saturday night for the Badgers, but they were back on the practice field today to prepare for Illinois this coming Saturday. The Buckeyes dominated in every facet in that game. Uh, Paul Chris and the players saying it hurt, but it's time to learn and move on. I want to see our best ball, hands down, uh, every position, and I'm going to push that all week. Like, how, how can we do something different during the week to just get better. I want to see a complete Wisconsin Badgers football game, and that's what I'm gonna. That's the standard I'm setting. We have four games under our belt, and, and you know we got to make sure we learn lessons through those experiences. You know, positives and the negatives, and, and how do we go forward and, and continue to be the best team, work to become the best team we can be. Let's pretend the Ohio State game did not happen. Ooh. And we learn and we move on. Yeah, that was a rough one. It was a bit rough. I'm looking forward to the highs getting back to the average at least. We'll get there. Most of this month, highs have been above average. So it all balances out. <laughs> the last five days have not. We've had a lot of the 60s, and tomorrow we're nowhere near it. The highs will only be in the 50s, and it will still be breezy. So prepare yourself for that. At 48 is in Milwaukee and near the lakeshore. It'll be cooler inland for the first bell. Fair amount of sunshine early, then a few more clouds as the day goes on. Uh, very similar to what we had for today. All right, thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. Our next newscast is coming up at 4.30 in the morning. Good night.